Last week I did a vlog all about a cheaper accommodation option in Bali here and, and I showed you the village that I live in. At the moment I'm in downtown Legian and uh, I've um, I, I've been asked by so many people about sort of the low to entry level places, not the real bottom, the bottom level over here is you can buy a, a tiny little bedroom to sleep in for about um, 60 bucks a month but you wouldn't like it. It doesn't have toilet, it's got shared toilets, it's like a, a boarding house but in your own little tiny separate apartment. Um, there's no kitchen in there, there's no bathroom, you share your facilities and and you literally, it's a, a place to put a mattress on the floor and go to sleep, wake up next morning. That's not ideal and I've tried living under similar conditions and I just, just about wrecked me. Um, there's a lot of places that you can get if you're over here but that, you, that, are, that are quite cheap um, and we had a look at one last week that Damo, my mate, stays in and that was I think only a couple of hundred dollars a month. Um, but again, no kitchen. He did have a, a, an old style bathroom with a toilet, a flushing toilet, which is at least one thing. No hot water, um, just a cold water shower. Um, I think he might have put a hot water service in, I think he did. And he also put an AC unit on. He got a little air conditioner and put it in there so, so he could cool down. Now he's just got a bed upstairs and a bed downstairs and there's just enough room to get out of bed and turn around. Probably enough room for a small wardrobe, but, but not certainly. Um, what you'd call a place to live permanently, but a great place. He flies over to Japan, comes back over here, looks after his chicken shop and his pizza place, looks after all the uh, the kids at the school where we go up to in Jimran. Um, and for what he needs, that's all. He wanted somewhere that his kids and his family could come over and stay when they came over here. And he didn't really need a lounge room because he socialises, plus he's got a big lounge chair out the front. Um, so for him, it was perfect for a couple of hundred bucks. Now he got very, very lucky, just knew the right person at the right time. Someone said, I know where there's a spare flat. And he, he jumped on it, was there straight away. So look, I'm excited to say, um, I did the same thing a couple of days later. Um, my, my wife, who's a local, um, and I found out about a, a villa that was very, very close to where Damo's place is. And, and it was going, now this is a bit of a fixer-upper. This is not walk in, throw a mattress down and, or a bed and, a, <laughs> and some sheets or something and, and, and call yourself a villa. There's no pool, there is no um, air conditioning, there's no hot water. Um, in fact, if you looked at one of my vlogs a while back, <laughs> it was entitled, I don't know what have I done. Um, the difference between that house and this one is this one's got a full roof. <laughs> It's, um, it's basically one, one big room downstairs and an upstairs bedroom. It's a lovely old school Balinese style thing with bamboo slats for the, for the walls so it lets the breeze flow through and it's actually quite nice and, and airy so that it's, um, it's not hot and stifling at all. It's actually, it actually gets a lot of breeze through it, just a little tiny, tiny bit of breeze. But I'm going to take you through it because this is my next project. What I'm going to start doing, we're going to start renovating this place and I'm hoping after a little bit of work and a bit of <clears throat> a bit of hard, of hard work and get the builders in here to do some some upgrades and some renovations we could turn this into somewhere that we can rent out to people that want to come over here for short term short medium term accommodation so no it's not going to be a, a weekly rental it's going to be something like three or six months worth but check this place out here now the first thing you notice is this cobblestone um, entrance and if you look up it's open to the atmosphere it's directly open to the sky and there's this weird big flap of green plastic and I worked out when the rain comes down there from the roof above it hits that plastic dribbles down there and ends up there out the hole <laughs> so there's another hole through this side and if you look through there if I go back up in here to, to the bathroom that's where that hole goes to the toilet so and look at that straight out to the open so <laughs> we get some tropical cyclones and thunderstorms and torrential rain here and when that comes down it'll just come down like a fire hose so this would be let me say a, quite a wet area um, but essentially I've got a beautiful big living area here where we've got enough room for a, maybe a TV up on the wall a huge big lounge uh, lounge or lounge suite or something there's a nice little kitchen area in the, in the middle or dining area there's a, a set of stairs to the ups, to upstairs and you've got a big kitchen bench here. So um, we're looking to maybe, we're getting quotes, we're getting some builders in and we're looking to take it over a long term. Now this, if you, if you were to move into something like this short term, you're going to be spending, I don't know, a 
quite a few hundred dollars a week just to move, just to stay here. Um, but on a weekly, week, week, week by week by week by week um, thing, they've got to get their money back, they've got to invest, they've got to clean it every time, they've got to maintain it and look after it. What I'm looking to do is we're looking to invest some money and some time into not only cleaning it up and preparing it for Western um, Western habitation. We need to put hot water service in, we need to do a whole heap of stuff that, that I would expect if I was coming over from, from the west to the west like Australia or something. TVs on the walls, air conditioning in the, in the main room at least, and, and get it ready. Return on, on investment. Over the next couple of years, you'll probably just make your money back, but after that you can start making a little bit of profit. And look, I'm not greedy, I'm not sitting here trying to turn this into, into the Taj Mahal. It's a really good place to, to for someone who's just over here for a few months to base himself. Someone with maybe uh, no kids, um, or maybe someone with a small family, they might want to change it around, put a little sofa bed downstairs and have upstairs for the kids or something. Um, but here it is. Um, this is our next little project. So we do a lot of, spend a lot of time vlogging and, and traveling around, but I tell you what, it's nice to be able to have something that we can put a little bit of roots down, just put a bit of time into it, put a bit of effort, and hopefully it'll return a bit of a reward for us. But uh, I'll take you for a bit of a look upstairs and have a look through the kitchen. And, uh, and let me know what you think. See if you think we could turn this little space here into a nice little place where you'd like yourself to come over and spend a few months while you're looking for somewhere to move to, while you're thinking about retiring in Bali, or you just want to come over here for three months and get away from wherever you're up at the moment. You let me know in the comments. I'll see you in a sec. Often things over here aren't what you see. You see this beautiful brick sort of um, facade above the, above the, splash, the splashback. <laughs> That's actually... It's made of paper. It's like a spongy wallpaper. And we've got a sink, but as is normal in Bali, only cold water. And there's a bit of a a bit of a gas sort of portable stove there. It's got good bones. It's got um nice solid timber uh, solid uh, cement walls and the tiles on the floor in that aren't, aren't bad. But the doors of all of the cupboards need throwing away. And redoing, we've got a, a bit of wobbly boot <laughs> heading up the stairs, but that's okay because that's that's pretty minor to fix. In fact, I'll take you upstairs quickly. Oh, now, it's as far as barley staircases go, I've got to say that's not too bad. Barley staircases are notoriously either huge steps and <laughs> short treads, or or vice versa. Um, they don't they don't have the same building code as we do, but that's not such a bad one. So the upstairs is currently set up with two twin beds in it, and it's 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 quite a strange bamboo sort of lattice. And if you look through it, I don't know if you can see those little points of light, but it's like a little bamboo fly screen. What it what it means is a little ceiling fan. It's got a really <laughs> a really old ceiling fan, but it still works. I think it came out with Noah, but. And their their electrical is a little bit well. It needs a bit of modernisation, but um, with the ceiling working, it cools it down nicely, and and these walls actually allow all the air to breathe. Now, once the 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 air is breathing through the the walls at the top, you've got fly screens on the windows, so the mozzies don't go go in. And it also cools the bottom down because you're not getting airflow now. This has got pretty, pretty horrible um, old felt-looking carpet. I think I'd probably put some nice vinyl floorboards or something down there, something that'll last, something that's easy to clean, and uh, and something that lines the place up. Um, I love the architecture. It's got beautiful rake ceilings. Um, it's got a nice big window here looking out to the other flats, the other units, and you've got a, more villas across the road and next door. It's quite a nice little spot. Really, really close to facilities and amenities. Uh, at least the door in this one's not too bad. Yep, I did notice we've got a little bit of flooring to do because this has got a little bit of, a little bit of sponge to it. Um, I um I think this has got got what it takes. 
but it's a bit a bit of a project and we're going to get a couple of builders to come and and crate up i'll definitely get my old mate puck mullen to come and build to come and crate for us i know he's busy doing the school at the moment but uh he might be ready to do something by the time we are um, it's actually a nice little roomy space it's got a nice big open kitchen now you don't use the kitchen a lot in Bali but it's nice to be able to have the space to do something if you want to or, uh, or set it up you've got plenty of room for fridge uh, plenty of electricity and all that sort of stuff for that and, and a huge big rumpus or, or living area now it's a bit weird but this was tacked on to another villa there's another room there that's next door and that's where that's where that room finishes that's open to the air you see where the roof line came down all they did was they tacked on like a semi outdoor version now you could if you wanted to seal it you could probably so uh, solidify the wall make this a foyer and put a door here or something and then go in but I, I quite like the openness of it and in fact this area down here is it's actually a drain you can see there's a hole down there if you have a look down here there's another hole down here so when it rains when the water comes bucketing down there now it, there's a bit of a gap and a bit of a, a uh, <laughs> some sort of um, guttering there but there will be a little bit of water coming down here so this will occasionally get wet and it'll run outside into the rest of the drain system um, so I think it would be really nice to turn this into a, like a little jungle and we could put some some trees some pot plant type things and here's our little bathroom they've already done that here so you've got this nice sort of semi indoor outdoor bathroom like they often do over here it keeps all the steam and the moisture from staying in the house and, and gets rid of it you've got a nice little um, bathroom here what's weird here okay it's got an old toilet that's easy to fix they've it looks like they've had a bathtub and they've filled it up or, or, or sealed it off um, and <laughs> let's look at this this is what i love about the place okay now this is not a short joke i promise you but if you're gonna stand up on that <laughs> i'm six foot tall and <laughs> i'm already up i don't know why you... right, i think what we need to do here is smash that tiles get rid of that bathtub make a nice big freestanding with a big shower a big rain head as well as a squirty wand Get rid of this old-fashioned piece of uh, memorabilia and the door because the door is screwed and clean this up, put new tiles right around. We're still going to keep that garden there because I think that looks magic. I want to extend that garden further down to the, to the other part of the house. And I've come up with an idea. Now tell me if you think this is going to look nice or not. But I'm thinking in the middle of the lounge room sort of garden area, if you want to if that's the right term for it, is putting one of those giant big eggshell baths like a big big bathtub and because the tv is going to go there on the wall i reckon okay it's not big enough for a spa bath but i reckon it's big enough to sit here and watch the footy or watch a movie and uh, and have a bath now it doesn't have any hot water um it's got limited electricity so in order for us to put air conditioning on we're going to have to beef the power up um and i'm hoping there's a lot of gaps, like all, all those gaps out the front here. This is this is sort of a breezy um, barley um, barley house, and then they don't normally run air conditioning. Now, to be honest, I'm sweating a little bit now, but it is it's warm. Um, if I put the fan on, this thing just about takes off. But you, um, oh, there we go. It's as soon as you get a bit of airflow down here, because you've got the roof above stopping the sun from beating down and, and heating the floor up. Or heading the bottom up it actually stays nice and cool um but i think just for so for comfort's sake i'm going to put a uh, a decent size air conditioning unit here on the wall by the tv or over the top here in the corner out of the way so that up until that roof lining you've got a nice seal pretty much right around except for that little bit there by the door which we can probably fill in now cold air sinks and hot air rises so it stands to the reason if we've got cold air coming out here it's going to go down it's going to eventually fill up to a point where it's pushing all the heat out the top and all we've got to do is come up with something they've just put a piece of plate i love this they put a piece of plastic between the two roofs so the water that comes down hits that just drips down here 
and and runs out the door. Um, but I think we can do better than that. I think it's, we, we should be able to put, put some sort of guttering in there. Still keep it open and breezy. I don't want to, to, to cover it in because I think it's, oh my God, that breeze coming through the door is beautiful. So having, having that airflow, I think is a really important thing here. Um, and the beauty of it is locations like right next door to some, some great uh, warungs directly across the road. There's one warung, warung a, a coffee shop and, and restaurant that's got a heap of Western food as well as uh, karaoke, pool tables, you name it. So that's that's a big plus. I'm one block away from the beach and I'm gonna go and ask the owners of the uh, resort just across the road, can I come over, drink beer at your resort and use your pool? Because if they let me do that, well, that might be, I can say to, to guests when they come over here, hey, listen, you, it, here's, a, here's a special card that'll get you into the pool across the road and all you gotta do is go and have a beer. So, look, to find a place like this, you, you've almost got to be living here. You've got to know somebody. You've got to, you've got to put some work in. I, I estimate about five grand Australian to do this place up. Now, you could spend that on the bathroom alone, but I, I do know where to buy stuff, and I know some really good uh, quality builders that have already done my place. So, a little bit of flooring upstairs, a bit of woodwork, and some cleaning up some... Uh, some loose flooring and stuff, um, tiling off the bathroom and the kitchen, um, and a few little bits and pieces. Hopefully in the next six or eight weeks, we could be ready to, to look, start looking for tenants. Now, I'm not in the motel industry. I don't want to have people coming and going every other day or every other week. So I'm looking to build something that we can use specifically for long term, say three, six, or even 12 month accommodation. And to be honest, I, th I think we're looking uh, over, a, uh, over a month, I think I'm looking around the 750 to $800 a month by the time we get it all together. Um, that's a reasonable figure. We've got to recoup our investment and uh, it's gonna be looked after. We can include a maid service with that as well, a housekeeper that comes in either weekly or daily or monthly or even just at the end or the beginning of the lease, depending on what people want, so that they can maintain the grounds and that as well. Um, and, and another thing that's come to mind, and I'm, I'm just not sure yet when it'll happen, but I'd love to see if it does happen. There's a beautiful temple next door as part of the, part of the, the, the grounds. But directly beside our unit is this gorgeous little back area. Now, yeah, it's full of tiles and it's full of roof shingles and, and rubbish, but I could, if, if you could get a little swimming pool or even just a big spa bath or something in here and a barbecue area and a bit of a covered outdoor area, it'd be the perfect place to sit back and have a beer in the afternoons and just relax. You could even potentially knock, it, knock a bit of a hole through there and make, a, make a, uh, an extra bedroom or something there, but um, look, I'm going to leave that for another day. I think the first thing we do is we clean this up, we get tenants in there, we see what we can do, we'll see if we can't um, can't get some uh, some return on that. Um, and that way we can supply something for a couple of grand for three months that, that gets people like that are looking to move over here, gets them started, gets them in the door of something that's got brand new appliances, new furniture, looks nice, and, and it's fully ready to go. It's going to have a cutlery and it's going to have everything you need to, to basically move in. Um, it's even gonna have a beer in a fridge because <laughs> I'm mother and I might have to come over, give you the key and share a beer with you. So, look, watch this. It's gonna be an interesting little project. I loved what I did last time with the villa or the, the home that we live in. That was an abandoned wreck. And um, I uh, we started and I just thought, oh my God, what have I done here? This is, this is like a major renovation. And to be honest, it took three months it took thousands of dollars to do up, but in the long run, we've got a beautiful place to live that's built our way, the, the, the way we want it. Um, we're there with at least a five year lease and we can extend that if we want to. Um, and it's nice to know, the one thing about these long leases is often you've got to pay everything up front. So if you're looking to, to find a cheap place to rent and you're looking for a long term, if you're here long enough, you hear about them, you, you network, you talk to people, it's not easy. You've got to basically get to know some locals. You've got to, I've got an advantage, obviously, because my wife's a local, so she can talk in Bahasa and she can ask around, and they're much happier to help each other than they are to help outsiders. That makes sense, I guess. 
because they know they're not, they're, there's not going to be commu commu communication or other issues. But look, it's, uh, it can be, it's daunting. I've already done it once. And, and it, it, it's, it was, look, it was a frustrating pleasure, let, let me say that much, um, to, just to find tools, to find screws and nails. They don't, you can't buy a bloody square drive over here. Anyone that knows about building, you get Phillips head and flathead, but those little square drive bits that are great for woodwork and stuff, they almost, I don't think they have them over here. I haven't seen them. Um, and look, the builders over here are still using hammers and nails. They're not using nail guns very often. They're certainly not using power tools or, or like, like battery operated drills. It's old school here. They use a handsaw for, for cutting boards of wood. And uh, what they can do with a handsaw, it, it puts most people shame. But um, there's a huge demand. There honestly is a huge demand. And I'd like to, to help to fulfill that demand and also to provide some some revenue for what we're doing because it gives us an opportunity for us to live comfortably or, or decently here in Bali but it also gives us somewhere that we can refer other people try this villa here there's one over here um, people have already started coming to me saying Mars listen if you know anyone wants a place we, we might have a, a place coming up in a couple of months time so by all means watch this space I don't have it. it's not ready yet you can't put a deposit down although I'm willing to talk to anyone but it's um it's the beginning of a little project and i thought you'd be interested to see what we're doing um i'm really interested to see how it comes up because we've done one up and it came up beautifully this has got potential it's got nice solid bits it's got a few holes so to speak some big ones in the roof but um but but water so, uh, pretty much watertight so yeah look Follow along, follow along with, and we're going to call this the beach house. So if you see a vlog that says the beach house, part 27, Mars are pulling his hair out. <laughs> You'll understand that we're, we've run into some frustrations. Listen, I want to say one thing that's been said in a couple of other videos. If you are looking to lease or rent or buy property in Bali, you need to know the system isn't the same as, as what you do over there. Now, there are websites around Bali villas and a whole heap of, of villa rental websites and some of them are thirty, forty thousand dollars a year um, and there's not much in the budget ones but there's probably a website uh, budget, Bali budget villas I don't know um, it's uh, you, you can't you won't get anything without being able to be here to find that because as my mate Daz has found out the the pictures that he he's been to 20 odd villas and none of the photos that they've showed you about what the villa looks like were taken in the last five years. They're all old photos when it looked fantastic. And he's walked in and I'm going, oh my God, and, and not even walking past the front door because it just looks terrible. Um, and there's been a lot of villas that were that were once a very popular villa that during COVID, the people went broke, they ran out of money. The lease that they had with the owners has gone into default. And so the owners are looking now to try and get someone else in there so they can start making money. Problem is, there's usually a fair bit of work required to, to get that process going. So if you're not over here with three months up your sleeve, it's not gonna happen. You can pay someone else to, to do what you need, but you need to be able to speak the language. You need to be able to find someone who's available, who's reliable, trustworthy, and who can work unsupervised because um, as soon as you go back to Australia or head off somewhere else, um, these guys are gonna go off and do what they think is the right way and not necessarily the same building practices or the same <laughs> safety codes as we're used to and, and i would never do it by proxy i would, wouldn't do it remotely because uh, you you wouldn't be happy with the job you need to get legal representation that's really really important um so my mate dazza they they had a villa that they looked at, at uh, taking over they wanted a, a long term like a 10-year lease they spoke to the to the person who was renting it out um uh, who was advertising it it turned out that person didn't have the authority to sign, so they went back up the food chain to find out who was the owner. They found someone else who wasn't even in the country um, that, that had a contract with the original owner to lease the land for maybe 25 years, I don't know the details specifically, but that guy had re reneged on his contract so that the contracts upstream or downstream from that weren't void, uh, were void. So the people that were signing leases didn't have permission to sign them 
the people who were who who he was looking to give a lot of money to, and when we're talking, I think it was about two hundred thousand dollars. He was looking to get the price down from thirty thousand a year to to twenty thousand a year. You've got to cough up all the money up front. Now, in his situation, he's been saving, he's got investments, and he's willing to cash out those investments so that him and his wife have got somewhere as a forever home or for a long, long-term home. But if you don't have that sort of cash up front, and let's face it, not many of us do, nor do we know what's going to happen in the next five years, you, you really don't want to move to a foreign country unless you've got family over here, or unless you know you might have been coming here for years. But if you get over here and suddenly the world changes and something happens and you think, oh, I'm invested, I've just spent you know, 50 grand to move into a, to, to move into a place um, and, and I don't want to be here, um, then you've got to try and find a way to, to get rid of that lease. Otherwise, you're stuck with no money. Um, so a lawyer is essential. They, they can go back through the history of the property. They can find out who actually owns it, who's, who's got the legal authority to sign a lease, to sign a, a tenancy agreement, and to take that money, because I guarantee what would have happened with, with Dazza is he would have handed that money over, that person would have taken off. Somewhere down the track, the guy who didn't pay his lease... Would have, caught, would have got caught up, and the owner would have turned around and said, well, it's my property. And despite whatever lease is, is under that, it doesn't make any difference because the owner of the property still owns the property. He can walk in tomorrow and say, get out, unless you've got him or her signing their authority over. It's complicated. Bali is complicated. Um, it's a beautiful place to live, but you've got to understand it, and, and you won't get that in a, in a couple of weeks over here staying in a hotel. So for everyone who wants to move to Bali, before you get serious, before you put your place on the market, before you sell anything at home, close the house up, get a gate, get a house set or whatever. A couple of things, you cannot bring animals over here. It's almost impossible. I've heard of people who have done it and it costs tens of thousands of dollars. Um, so just get it out of your head if you've got dogs or cats or, or, or something. There's almost no chance you can get them over here. I could be wrong, but that's what I've been told. And there is no chance you'll get them back because rabies and other dangerous diseases is in Bali. And, and it's almost absolutely impossible to, to go back the other way, to go back to Australia or New Zealand. So this is a, a move for life, or even if you want to do it for a couple of years, unless you've got someone that can stay in your place and rent that out for a couple of years, it could be a, it could be a big move. Um, it's a fantastic move. I've been here two years. I'm planning to hang around a lot longer. Um, and I'd love to have the, the comfort of knowing I've got a passive income happening while I'm, when I go back home to see my family, um, catch up with my kids and my, parent, and my dad and my sisters and that, so that I know that there is something happening and it's not something I need to be having my hands on all the time. But it's still a pretty big move. It's still there. There's only so many ways you can do this. And because I'm married to a local, She's the one that, the, that owns the contract. It's all going in her name. I'm just the poor mug that's helping pay for it and do some, do some work to, to help her out. But um, that's how it happens. People say, where do you get these places for $200 a month? Well, they're, they're around. Um, the place we used to live in was $100 a month. But there was no toilet. There was no kitchen. There was, uh, th there's no facilities. There's a squat dunny, a, a, like a long drop, and, and a, a plastic bucket that you use to wash your dishes and your hair and everything else in it. I'll tell you what, if you, want it, if you, if you think you can make it at that end of the spectrum, good on you, because I did it for 12 months and, geez, it nearly wrecked me, I'll be honest. Um, but at that sort of middle level, that's where I'm going for. I'm going for something where you, know, you can get something for, for three months for a couple of grand. You can come over here, you know what it's going to cost. You're not going to get a motel room even in a real cheap place for that. And this gives you your own autonomy. It's close to facilities gives you a place, it's got off-street parking for a motorbike or two, um, and it gives you a place to start looking around. Now, not a lot of people would live here in sort of downtown Legion. It's nice, close to the beach, it's close to pools, it's close to a lot of amenities, pubs, clubs, and warungs, and all that sort of stuff. But if you wanted to live here, most people would either live um, on the west side, over near Changu, Barara, a lot of digital nomads are heading over there and running businesses back in Australia from over here. Um, architects and accountants and people who are mostly working on computers. Um, you've got the mostly retired or semi-retired people on the opposite side over in Sonoa. You've got beautiful, low-key, sort of um, a lot quieter living, a lot less traffic. Having said that, there's a couple of huge malls and hospitals going in over there, so that's going to probably eventually get built up and, and the, the, uh, the, 
the, the nomads or the, the retirees will move further north or further away. Um, but to base yourself somewhere for a couple of months, get your bearings, see what's around, or even if you're just fly in, fly out, you live in, live in West Australia and you want to come over here for a couple of weeks and then fly back to West Australia, go to work in the mines and come back again, maybe leave the family over here while you're away working. I know people are doing that all the time. And, and this would be the sort of ideal place where you don't need a swimming pool, you might have a, a spa bath or you just go and jump in a shower or something. Um, and you have a nice comfy place to live. Um, depends what you're after. So, look, if you've got questions, if you want to know, I, I, I'm not a real estate agent, I can't sort of be pointing out all of the different things of, of where you can go, but, but I can be here on the ground looking at what's going on. I can try to answer some of your questions. If you're coming over to Bali, I'm happy to go for a drive with you and, and show you around the places, the sort of places that you might want to start asking questions because there's a great network of expats over here, and Aussies and Kiwis and, and Poms and you name it. There's a really good little network of people. There's a lot of business people that work over in Bali as well from that, that live in Australia. They invest, they, they run uh, hotels and, and bars and stuff like that, restaurants. Um, and, and they've got a lot of ideas that I don't have. So look, the idea is, come over here and start asking questions, familiarise yourself with what you're doing, and, and hopefully it'll give you a bit better of an idea of what, what expectations you've got. Um, if you know what, what you're looking for, keep your, for that first sort of um, temporary home, don't be looking for somewhere with a swimming pool, don't be going the whole hog and, and, get, and spoil yourself. Come over here and see if you can handle a nice place that's, that's made the local style without a pool, and, and then you go, no, I can't do it. After a couple of months, you'll either love it or you'll hate it. But I'm giving it a shot. I'm loving being here. I'm absolutely loving it. And it was tough. The first 12 months were, were pretty hard for me. Um, but it's starting to, I'm starting to sort of get a little bit more, I know where to go now. I know where to buy stuff. I know where to go and buy some good Aussie butcher snags, you know, things that you, you miss from home. Um, and I'm starting to network with a lot of locals as well as a lot of foreigners and people coming over. I always catch up with my subscribers, as many as I can when, we ca when they come over and we have a little meet and greets night and that sort of gives me my, my entertainment for the week, I guess, and a good chance to sort of chat to, to many of you guys. So if you're coming to Bali, I keep saying it every week, but if you're coming, look me up. Now jump on my Facebook page, Murray Wilkinson on Facebook and make friends, follow me, whatever you do there. You can message me from Facebook which means that I can talk back to you, we can communicate if you are coming over and you want to say, Muzz, is it possible we can catch up, take me for a bit of a drive around and give me a, an idea of what sort of where the places are to live or whatever. Can't guarantee I'm a busy man, but, I, but I'll do my best and certainly point you in the right direction. But when, I, when, you, when you are coming, look me up and I'll see you when you get here. Cheers, guys.